Welcome back. Let's talk macro photography. Taking close up photos like this and this. So, which phone takes the best macro photos? The S21 Ultra, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, or the trusty Xperia 1 Mark II? Let's find out. First, we have to define what makes a good macro image. We'll compare the phones in three categories, starting with detail. For this test, we'll use a rare $10 bill from 1950. Let's start with the Xperia. In this full shot of the bill, we can see the center is quite sharp. And as we make our way towards the corners, it starts to become soft. Now it's easy to blame the optics of the lens, but I think this is the natural out of focus effect of shooting with the 24 millimeter lens up close. Now let's switch to the S21 Ultra. Here's a 108 megapixel image of the bill, and if we zoom in into the center, the detail is quite impressive. The trade-off is that the area of focus is smaller than what we saw with the Xperia. So as we move away from the center, the image starts to become blurry quite fast. So what about the iPhone? Does it have the same limitation? Nope. The center of the bill is sharp, and so are the corners. This is the trademark iPhone style of keeping everything sharp in the image, which in this case is helpful, but not always. If we just compare the detail in the center with Hamilton's face, the S21 Ultra wins easily here with its 108 megapixel sensor. This round is a draw between Samsung and Apple. Now let's switch to another key aspect of macro. How close can we actually get to the subject? The smaller the distance, the more impressive of an image we can capture. The limiting factor, of course, is how close the smartphone can focus. Let's start with the Xperia. And as we can see that the full note is about the limit here, it's easy to see the focus limit by half pressing the shutter button to confirm the focus with the green boxes. If we try the same thing with the iPhone, we see a similar range. Trying to go closer will result in blurry images. Last, we have the S21 Ultra. And wow, it's easy to take close-ups of the center of the bill like this, with the main wide lens. But it gets even better. If we switch to the ultra-wide, we can get very close. With this quarter here, the phone was touching the table by the end of this, giving us quite an impressive result of the center of the quarter here. These images are simply impossible to pull off with both the iPhone and the Xperia, unless you add some sort of external macro lens, which I'll cover in a future video. Samsung wins this round easily. The last section is my favorite, which is color. For this round, I captured raw images with all three phones of these coins. This is a reference image taken with a Micro Four Thirds camera. Take a close look at the image and how the bottom left Peru coin is the most yellow, while the center dollar is a bit orange. The pound on the right has a more subtle border. Also notice how the two coins on the top are not the same silver color. The Mexican coin on the left is more white in color while the quarter on the right is more grayish. Let's start with the S21 Ultra. This was the only smartphone that captured the orange color of the dollar. Even though the color is a bit saturated, the phone also did well with the coins on the top row. Keep in mind I only made minor exposure adjustments to all these photos. The colors are straight out of camera. Here's the iPhone Pro RAW and the Xperia RAW side by side, with the iPhone on the left. Both perform similarly well, but notice how the bottom row, all the coins appear to be yellow. We can see that the iPhone has an advantage at keeping every coin in focus here. But in terms of color, both are very similar. This round is another win for Samsung. The larger sensor on the S21 Ultra helped it capture a bit more of the subtle color differences. Overall, for the best macro photos, I would say the S21 Ultra is in a league of its own. The Galaxy can get the closest to the subject and can also pull the most detail with its 108 megapixel sensor. The runner-up would be the iPhone, with its ability to keep everything sharp across the image. Then we have the Xperia 1 Mark II, which is the oldest phone of the pack. It has a strong manual camera system, 
And while it's not the best for macro photos, it packs a punch when shooting macro video, which I've covered before. I wonder how the One Mark III will perform in this area. This was a quick comparison of how all three phones handle macro, but I plan on going more in depth on how to take great macro photos with the Xperia and the iPhone. Let me know which phone I should cover in the comments below. Take a moment to like the video, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.